In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to determine uh, the energy output of a wind turbine given its power curve uh, and uh, wind speed considerations. So what we're looking at here is a, an actual power curve for a turbine. This is, in this case, a Gamesa G90 2 megawatt turbine. Um, this is actually is a power curve for the turbine at the University of Delaware's Lewis campus. Um, They've had this turbine uh, in operation since 2010, and it is still currently in operation. Um, and it is a two megawatt turbine. Um, now, as we went over in class, a two megawatt turbine does not mean that the turbine is generating two megawatts of power at all times. Um, as you can see from the power curve, just in brief review, uh, the power in kilowatts uh, jet increases. Um, first of all, you can see it starts at 3 meters per second. So anything below 3 meters per second is no power. It gradually increases, um, you know, somewhat linear, kind of reaches an exponential uh, curve here. And it's not until about, as you can see, oh, we'll say th about 13 meters per second, it actually reaches 2,000 kilowatts, which is going to be 2 megawatts. So again, just because it's a two megawatt turbine does not mean it is generating two megawatts at all times. That's a really important consideration. So how do we, you know, how do we interpret this chart? Well, it's very straightforward. We have wind speed on the X and we have power on the Y. So if we want to figure out what the turbine is going to generate in terms of a power output at any given wind speed, um, we simply trace the curve. So let's let's start filling this in a little bit. So I've created the uh, a table on the left here uh, from zero to twenty five meters per second. Um, we have power, and then we have uh, power of wind, which we're going to actually delete here. So this would be the power output uh, in kilowatts. So at zero, as we know, uh, this does not start actually generating power until three meters per second. So zero, one and two meters per second, we do not have any power output. Um, so at three meters per second, um, it's, it's really hard to see on this chart, but if we wanted to follow three meters per second, um, I'm gonna cheat a little bit because I actually happen to know this, it's about 22 kilowatts at three meters per second. So I just enter in 22 there. At four meters per second, um, it's around 85. At 5 meters per second, we're looking at, uh, we'll say about oh, 110. Uh, 6 meters per second, it's about, if we follow it over here, look at about 350. And then we and we would actually trace it all the way up here. So I'm going to fill that in um, in a second. Okay, so I cheated just a little bit. Um, these are actually the numbers from the real specs. Um, but you can see at 15 meters per second, we actually is the first time we actually reach full peak output. So that's when we actually have, what you could call it, you know, two megawatts of output. So everything above 15 meters per second through the cutout speed, which is 21 meters per second, we're gonna get two megawatts. So, so everything 18, meters per second, 19 meters per second, 20 meters per second. So at 21 meters per second, it's actually going to go to zero. And everything, any speed above 20, uh, 21 and above, excuse me, is also going to be zero. Okay, so that's how you would actually interpret this curve. So whatever the curve is for the wind turbine um, that you're analyzing, and these will be available if you look at the spec sheets. If You, you can just Google... I found this by just Googling the um, Gamesa G90 2 megawatt wind turbine, found the, the specs, and um, that's where I got this power curve. So you can find this very easily for, for any, um, any turbine, at least in my experience. And if you have the power curve, then you have um, the power output at each speed. Okay, so now we're going to look at um, how do we determine the actual output in um, kilowatt hours um, given different um, lengths of time at different wind speeds. Okay, so now um, I've inserted a chart um, that I've added. These are hypothetical um, hours per year. So this 
let's assume this is in you know Wilmington or wherever the case may be uh, and this is the the wind speed profile for the year so at zero meters per second if you take all of the wind measurements throughout the whole year um, you in this case you have 450 hours of no wind at one meter per second we have 400 hours two meters per second 700 hours and so forth and you can see if you add all these up they add up to 8760 which is the number of hours in a year so if we want to determine the output in kilowatt hours of this turbine under these conditions it's very straightforward we simply take the kilowatts times the hours per year and that will result in kilowatt hours per year so it's really that easy so all we have to do is combine these two tables um, of course the easiest way to do that is just to create um, a formula here so we're multiplying this times this and what's really nice is that this follows you know I've created it to, to exactly follow the wind speed cells so these cells are exactly the same as these cells and so what we can do now of course we have you know at zero kilowatt at 450 hours we're not getting any output so you can just copy down and this is telling you your kilowatt hours of output at each speed throughout the year so I'm gonna make this a comma so if I wanted to and let's get rid of those zeros um, so this would be kilowatt hours per year and if I want to total that up I can simply do an auto sum pretty straightforward so this will tell me this te is telling me under these conditions you know this wind speed at this number of hours per year this is going to be my total kilowatt hours per year for this wind, wind turbine under these conditions at this location the last thing I'm going to do is calculate the capacity factor under these conditions in order to do that I need to determine the maximum possible output of this wind turbine so the maximum possible let's type this the maximum possible output equals the number of hours hours in a year times the maximum power output okay so the capacity factor is based it tells you what percent of the maximum possible output you're actually getting so what we need to do is calculate the total you know the maximum possible output in order the max output would be and if you want to pause it and think about it for a second and, th and think about how to figure this out the max output will simply be since this is a two megawatt turbine our peak output is 2000 kilowatts so if we were operating at full capacity for the the whole year we would have 2000 kilowatts times 8760 hours so we can just set that equation and there we go so our maximum possible output is going to be about 17.5 um, in this case we're looking at uh, gigawatt hours per year or 17 million, 17 and a half million kilowatt hours per year. So our capacity factor is simply oops, the actual output divided by the maximum possible output. So in this case, we're dividing um, G29 by G30, and that's going to give us okay, turn into a percentage. So the capacity factor for this turbine in this location is 28.3 percent so that means you're getting 28.3 percent of the absolute maximum possible output most wind turbines I mean if you get a 40 percent capacity factor you're doing really well um, for for the uh, utility scale uh, residential scale is much lower so that um, concludes the demonstration on how to calculate output and capacity factor of a wind turbine